Lauren sat by the pile of tools and weapons, his eyes reviewing it abstractedly. He saw several skulls on the pile, shiny, smeared with some protective ointment, or perhaps just patinated by time. Trophies. He was too exhausted to react with alarm. Yet if this pile was destined to be destroyed or left behind, the tribe was depriving itself of two commodities ordinarily too important to forsake. What was happening? The flames rose. Everyone came out, and under the headman's stare, the men stepped over the piled-up tools and weapons and started breaking them with their feet. What things they couldn't destroy with their hardened feet, they picked up and bent over their hands or snapped against their knees, sometimes helping each other. Finally, they were left with a mound of rubble. Into the fire it went, without hesitation or a look of regret. I kept watching it, playing with the notion of us being held still in time by possessions. That seemed to be the logic of the ritual. Imagine us, I chuckled silently, burning our possessions not to remain still in time. I pictured bonfires like this one on some affluent American street, everyone dragging out their paid-for belongings, furniture, appliances, toys, and feeding them to the purifying fire. All of a culture, the most materialistic and leisure-minded in the world, onto the fire, spraying gasoline, dropping matches, watching it all burst into flames. In my mind, I saw flames spring up in the front yard, and another, and another, all along the street, all along the neighbourhood, and the next neighbourhood. I pictured the town to be Washington, all of Foggy Bottom, Pennsylvania Avenue and the White House on fire, all freeing itself, taking off, soaring, carried by the vehicle of sacrificial purifying flames.